So you've done a lot of research with multiple sclerosis. I'm very interested to hear what you have found so far, if diet it can be the only treatment for it, or if you recommend anything w with the addition with the starch-based diet for multiple sclerosis. I have done a lot of work on this, uh, and I've worked on it for all oh, 25 years, but more so lately by doing a study with Oregon Health and Science University since 2008, we started this uh, and if you want to read about the study and the results, it's in my July 2014 newsletter on my website, drmcdougall.com. But uh, there are two, two things that you mentioned that always have to be considered in any disease, whether it be heart disease or diabetes or osteoporosis or multiple sclerosis or rheumatoid arthritis. What, what, what you have to do is you have to evaluate what standard therapy does on its own merits. In other words, uh, heart surgery for chronic coronary artery disease does not save lives. So on its own merits, it doesn't work. Now, if you have heart surgery, you still have to eat a good diet. It's not like you get out of get eating a good diet if you have heart surgery. So everybody should be eating a good diet regardless of what other therapies they choose, and they should choose other therapies based on their own merits. Uh, type 2 diabetes, treating with aggressively with insulin and diabetic pills, kills. It kills people. Increases the risk of heart disease, increases the risk of overall mortality, low sugar reactions, uh, dangerously low sugar reactions. Uh, the, this intensive therapy without any question, without any debate, every doctor should know this and does if they're bred, uh, knows intensive diabetic therapy with medication kills. So why would you accept it? You know, I mean, just not, even if you're still eating bacon and brie, why would you take pills that make you sick? Uh, the same thing with multiple sclerosis. There have been several studies done on MS. Uh, almost all of them have been paid for by the companies that make the drugs. And by the way, the drugs, just the medication, costs on average $50, $55,000 a year just for the drug. Not the needles, you know, not the, not the syringes, not the sponges, not the doctor's visits. Uh, just the drugs alone cost fifty-five dollars just for the medication. So the drug companies have done several studies uh, trying to prove the benefits of drugs and the results have not been flattering. Uh, let's just say with uh, careful methodology and design and efforts, they've been, shown, they've been able to show small benefits in terms of their drugs. But a recent independent study published in JAMA, I believe it was uh, 2011, but it's easy to find, just look at the, you know, my research and we'll point it out. Uh, long-term, the only long-term independently done study of MS patients show that it doesn't work. These drugs do not reduce disability in patients. And uh, plain and simple, uh, you have to evaluate them on their own merits. If you want to take something that doesn't work, I realize your insurance company has to pay for it, that some of these drugs can be killers themselves. Um, they have some very toxic adverse effects, some of the drugs do. If you want to take that, take it on its own merits, whether you change your diet or not. So uh, please do your evaluation independently and uh, choose the therapies that work best for you. Now, when it comes to diet and multiple sclerosis, I'll give you the summary, and if you want to go into more details, we can. Essentially, multiple sclerosis is a disease of food poisoning of the Western diet. That's clear, clearly shown by history, uh, by geography. In other words, this is a disease only of Western countries where they eat the Western diet. Uh, experimental animal studies show this, uh, but particularly the work of Roy Swain, who was the former head of Oregon Health and Science University Neurology Department. He did 50 years of research on 5,000 people showing that this disease uh, not only was caused by the Western diet, but if you stop the Western diet, in other words, saturated fat animal foods, that you'll slow or stop the progression of the disease in almost all cases. Dramatic benefits. So we took Dr. Swank's work, which was an observational study published in major medical journals, on his patients over a 30-year period of time. Uh, we took... Uh, his founding work, and we did a randomized single blind, in other words, Raider blind, uh, control trial at Oregon Health and Science University, and we found some wonderful things. 
very dramatic things. Uh, things that should cause every neurologist to prescribe a healthy diet to a patient, whether or not they prescribe interferon beta or copaxone or any of the other drugs that they believe work regardless of what the science says. They should still be giving the patient a healthy diet encouragement to eat well because there's no adverse effects. And our study shows several things that are important. One, it shows people will do it. Our compliance rate was huge. At the end of a year, in other words, permanently, what happened was uh, the control group ate a diet of 40% fat. The intervention group, those on the diet, those we talked to eat this way, their overall fat take dropped to 15%. And that was maintained for a year. So permanent, permanent changes in diet. Uh, we estimate that 80% of the people that we taught this diet followed 100% of the time for a year. So permanent changes. So compliance, we've shown. Uh, we also showed about uh, 10 to 20 pound permanent weight loss, depending on how you look at the data, 10 to 20 pound permanent weight loss. These people didn't come for weight loss. They came for multiple sclerosis over a year. We showed a 20 point drop in total cholesterol and similar drops in other lipids. Maintained over a year. I mean, this, this is phenomenal results. And then one of the things about multiple sclerosis that is important to patients and neurologists is their major complaint is fatigue. The MS Society says 80% of the people with MS suffer from significant fatigue, and it's often the reason they quit their, their vocation in life, because they're so fatigued. We showed by three separate study methods that fatigue was instantaneously relieved in these people with a change in diet, and that fatigue improvement was maintained for a year. Now, we didn't show some things we planned on showing, some very important things, and there are reasons for that. We didn't show changes in the lesions in the brain based on MRI. We didn't show changes in disability. The major reason for that was because of the randomization process. We only had 60 people to randomize, and just by uh, the luck of the draw, just by the roll of the dice, just like when you go to Las Vegas and you know you throw the dice on the tables. 30 times or 60 times. Some days you wake, walk away a winner, some days you don't. Well, in our case, what happened is because of the roll of the dice, we heavily loaded the diet group with very sick people. The disease burden was huge. In our diet group and the control group, the disease burden was very low. They were very healthy. Just the luck of the draw. So we knew as soon as we completed randomization that we would not show the results we wanted. Still, we completed the experiment, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, it could be done again. I, hopefully, we've inspired people to continue our research, Dr. Swank's research, because not only is it safe to do this, but it overall improves the health of these people dramatically. And I believe Dr. Swank's uh, conclusions will be confirmed that this disease is stopped by a healthy diet. However, we have more work to do to prove it. But why in the world would a neuro neurologist not recommend to this to his or her patients? Because it does no harm, the first rule in medicine. It improves their overall health. It improves the way they feel dramatically. Absolutely. Why not? I mean, there's just no, the only reason they don't, neurologists don't, and universally they do not. I mean, you would have to search among tens of thousands of neurologists to find an exception. The reason they don't is because they weren't trained this way. That's right. They receive absolutely no education on diet. Uh, number two, uh, almost all of them eat the diet that gives you MS and makes the attacks occur, the Western diet, so they can't see over their dinner plates. There's a lot of ego involved. You know, when it comes to medicine and medical care and all the things we've been doing in the past, when you go on to another approach, you have to admit to yourself and to your patients that your prior practice was uh, destructive in their lives. It uh, destroyed their bank accounts if they paid for it, but they don't. You imagine how fast uh, somebody's savings would go if you were paying for a drug that was $55,000 a year. Uh, it destroyed their family life. It destroys their productivity. It destroyed everything about them. In addition to allowing the MS to go on, they were constipated and fat and diabetic and all the things that that bad diet, which the doctor may have now come to realize was bad teaching, was very destructive teaching. The doctor has to admit to the patient and his or herself, hey, I screwed up. 
I hurt my patients for the last 30 years. I apologize. I will go on to doing the right thing. Believe it or not, few doctors can do that. Uh, the natural human ego and our desire to preserve our self-images is such that it's hard for somebody to say, okay, I admit, I, I, I will not sin anymore, Father. I'm on to better things. They can't do it.